Agritech is one space that's proven to be the next big thing for startups with the application of various technological innovations to improve efficiency and output, a number of agritech startups are creating solutions to eliminate farm losses. Agritech, which is the use of technology in agriculture, horticulture and aquaculture to improve yield and profitability, has helped optimize the farming process. In Nigeria, agritech startups have continued to tackle some of the challenges farmers face by streamlining the agricultural value chain. However, more needs to be done to make the process easier and provide the necessary support to skill. Comfort Onyaga, founder of Izanu Africa, discusses how we can leverage technology to build a viable agricultural sector. Comfort, glad to have you on Tech Trends today. Yeah, it's my pleasure, CFA. Good afternoon. Okay, so let's start by understanding how blurred the line between technology and the agricultural industry has become today. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, when you talk about technology and the agricultural industry, especially the ecosystem in Nigeria and in Africa as a whole, right? The line is very, very blurred. Like it is very blurred in the sense that we do not have um, the technological infrastructure in Nigeria sufficient enough to drive the agricultural sector and ensure the optimization of the value chain. So especially in the rural community where most of the agricultural activity takes place. So it's not enough for us to say um, we have a, a proliferation of um, the ag tech company springing up here and there at the rate of, let me say, um, 110%. Yeah, it's happening, but the line is really uh, blood because of lack of uh, policy implementation. We do not have the infrastructure. Advocacy is happening, but it's not enough. How concerted are we? Uh, is, the, is the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, you know, working with stakeholders across the different segments of the agricultural value chain to ensure that technology is integrated into the agricultural space. So that leads me to my next question, right? And we know how countries like Israel, even though they are smaller in size and population, are done well with agriculture. Do we have a national strategy that can help us maximize the role of technology in agriculture? Yeah, just recently, um, sometime last year, at about in, in about eight, October, November, the DG of the National Information um, Technology Development Agency launched the ten years or um, ten years plan, the national strategy. There is a strategy, but the thing is, implementation is where it lies. So the strategies, you know, is get towards ensuring that Nigeria becomes one of the top three um, countries in securing food, ensuring food um, sufficiency, and also driving um, export stand of um, standard agricultural produce, leveraging the, um, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, you know, the borderless trade and all. The strategy is in place, but are the key players in the agricultural um, sector, right? carried along in ensuring that these strategies is implemented? Who do, do they know what their role is? Like I said, it requires a concerted effort. Having the strategy is not enough. If we do not make effort towards ensuring that we domesticate it, you just realize that the document become obsolete. It's just there. And we continue to play catch up with um, the fourth industrial re uh, revolution. Uh, based on what you have said, you know, how do we really get more young people to be in interested in the agricultural sector? You know, because sometimes when they hear about it, it seems like everyone has to go to the farm. But, you know, try to explain to us what the value chain looks like in that sector. Yes, yeah, so the value chain is currently evolving with um, technological innovation and um, disruption here and there with the Internet of Things, AI, big data. So um, this is where the Gen Z and the millennials coming, you know, to bridge that gap because they are the ones that are digitally literate. So um, it, it also behoves um, the institutions to see how the capacity of the young people are built to be able to use this technology 
So that in itself is not enough. So what are the incentives beyond making it um, attractive enough for the young people to come in? If I if I go into agriculture right now and um, leveraging technology to drive farming, that you know beyond the fact that we have the ICT as a tool, we also have the other side of it that has to do with um, the mechanized farm equipment, the tools that are used hands on the farm. So. Um, as, as I speak with you currently, we're still we're still in the old uh, and uh, in the old practice and fashion where farmers still use their hands to cultivate. Like that labor is so tedious that young people don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I'd rather be on the other side. So for the government to ensure that young people come into the space and act right, they have to bridge that infrastructural gap beyond ICT, we need mechanized farm equipment that will make agricultural farming exciting for my generation because agriculture is the way to go. Agriculture is the only sustainable means through which we can drive growth and economic development in Africa. Agriculture is the new oil money. <laughs> okay, okay, so what are some of the ways that uh, big data, like you mentioned, IoT, how are they driving change in that industry? Yeah, so um, it has actually gone a long way, you know, with Nigeria, Kenya, and um, Ghana as the top three countries in the ag tech space. Um, you see, currently we have challenges, climate crisis and all. So with big data, internet of things, um, um, AI, artificial intelligence, right? We are able to harness data and, and, and drive um, insightful or what I call um, um, precision farming. So with this to improve supply chain management. So, you know, there are different segments of the agricultural value chain. There's the supply chain bit of it. We require data to be able to drive that. And there is also climate smart irrigation, you know, holistically, data, this big data and the introduction of um, an adoption of artificial intelligence has gone a long way to change the narrative and the landscape. It's not looking the same as it was even in 2015. And I believe it's going to get better. And this is the only way forward to guarantee food security in Africa. So as an ag tech startup, what are the challenges you're facing today? Yeah, the challenges we're facing today is um, lack of infrastructure, technological infrastructure sufficient enough. Um, when I say infrastructure, it's beyond IT, information and communication technology, especially for rural community where um, there is a low level of digital literacy among the farmers. And these farmers, I, I mean um, the smallholder farmers who, who constitute over 70% of the population of farmers in Nigeria. There's low dig digital literacy. There's no technological how know-how. Even for mechanized farm equipment, they really do not know how to use it. So um, as a startup, we have, we're having these challenges. And you know that would also increase our unit economies in a way because we have to work with agents to ensure that these services are delivered to them since they are not digitally literate enough to use these tools. Okay, come forward. Uh, finally, you mentioned it a bit, but I, I know that one of the challenges that you would face, you know, in this space is the issue of trust. How are you comforting that? Yeah, so the issue of trust, especially in the aspect of service delivery and um, engagement with the, with, the, with the key stakeholders, even in the land system, you know how people are afraid of even buying land or, you know, going to um, lease a land that's is on or fraughted with a lot of um, challenges, maybe communal or family issues, right? So we're working with the core stakeholders, which is the, go the government. You know, we have the geographic information system offices, domicile in most of the states. And we're also working to see that we work concertedly to adopt the right to the GIS, GIS tool to ensure that even the landowner and the lessee, that's the user, right? are able to use that tool to, to ascertain the size of land, then we do our due diligence behind the scene and ensure that the right info, it is only land that is devoid of such issues and challenges people are afraid of that is listed on our platform. So that's where we would have, 
We are buying down the risks for the land users. Awesome, Comfort. It's very encouraging to see that you're a woman in technology trying to make a difference in the agricultural tech space. We wish you all the best. Thank you for being on the show thank today. Thank you very much. Yeah, have thank you day. very much for having me, CFA. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Yeah.